everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Okay, today's video is going to be about the five worst houseplants for winter in my humble opinion and experience. These are five plants that after a few years of taking care of houseplants, I am just gonna be a little bit on the edge of my seat for, and I'm gonna tell you why. Doesn't mean it's gonna be the same for you, but I'm just sharing my experience. So we're gonna start off with an easy one that I think a lot of creators, houseplant creators will probably talk about this year, and that is succulents. Here today specifically, I'm going to be showcasing this Haworthia. What I'm about to share holds true for succulents and cacti kind of across the board. Now, a lot of people might be surprised, especially if you are newer to houseplants, about me saying this because succulents can typically be branded as very easy care low maintenance house plants, but the trickiest part with these plants is lighting. And what happens during the winter time? Light decreases a lot. There's way less hours of sunlight in the day, as we all know, and that poses a huge challenge for houseplants that are super dependent on that light, like succulents and cacti. And what happens is when succulents don't get enough light, they start to do something called etoliate. So here we have a different succulent, and this one is a bit shielded from the light, and you can see the impact on it. It's starting to lose a lot of leaves towards the base of the plant. And on top of that, it's stretching out. A lot of people actually think that that means their succulent is growing when in reality, succulents should maintain how compact they are, like typically, depending exactly on what succulent you have. But a lot of succulents want to grow and should grow pretty compact like this. When a succulent starts stretching out and getting leggy and long, less leaves, you know that it is stretching towards the light and it is not currently getting enough light where it is. I am putting succulents hands down number one on this list because of the lighting issue. But with lighting, I might have a solution for you. I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video, Soltech Solutions. Now, it is no secret that one of the main problems that come up when purchasing grow lights are how expensive they are. But good news for you, Soltech Solutions is running a Black Friday sale from November 22nd. So it is currently running today and it will end on the 27th. They are currently offering 20% off with up to 40% off with on-site discounts. The only code that you need to access this is the code Black Friday, and that is the only code that is gonna be active during the time of this sale. So if you are used to using my personal a good and planty discount code that will not work during this time frame. You want to use the code Black Friday. Another added bonus is that customers will get two times the rewards during this sale. So make sure you go ahead and rack up those rewards, get your savings. They will be linked down below in my description box along with the code. And yeah, I truly love Soltech with my whole heart. I have been a huge fan of them ever since I gave them a go. It's been months of me using them and my houseplants have reacted really well to them. So I will always stand by Soltech. <laughs> now, with all that being said, we are going to move on from succulents to another plant with a different issue. Let's talk about, okay, this plant I don't talk about all that much on my channel, and that is the Alocasia Dragon Scale. And this is the only Alocasia I have left in my collection. I've gotten rid of all of the other Alocasia, mostly due to spider mites, which they are super, super prone to getting. I've actually grown this one from a stump. The problem with Alocasia during the winter time that makes it a little bit challenging is the fact that they can go dormant. That is not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of houseplants do go dormant, but it does make it a little bit more challenging to be there and take care of this plant year round. I actually do have a whole video on alocasia and alocasia care if you wanna check it out. It is a little bit older. The quality is a little bit less fancy than now, but it does have a lot of good information um, and I do a deep dive on this plant. The main things that I'm gonna say uh, in regards to alocasia in this video is to make sure you're not overwatering this plant. This is a plant that you wanna kind of communicate with and 
let them guide you with what they need. If the growth is slowing down and they are losing some leaves, reduce that watering, don't fertilize to put a band-aid on it, and just go with the flow. Get rid of completely dead leaves, let the plant get rid of them on their own time. It'll die back, you kind of let it sit, and then come springtime, you can start increasing watering again and start to bring this plant back to life. It is not an impossible plant by any means, and I'm not saying dormancy is even guaranteed, but it is a plant that has a little bit of like a different care routine than some of the other house plants we are so used to and have a bit more of a straightforward growing season or growing year. One thing I will say that I am doing to keep this plant happy is I keep her in sphag, so I'm still letting her grow out her roots and really establish herself in the sphag. I do keep her in my favorite. I'm sure my good implanters know where I'm going with this. I keep her in a little cloche and this keeps her uh, humidity high, moisture high, and as long as I keep it away from a window, I noticed when I keep her closer to a window, the glass really magnifies the sunlight and tends to burn her leaves. So I do keep her a little bit away from any direct sunlight as well. And she has been growing happier, healthier, and faster than ever before. So if you wanna check out uh, these cloches, I do have them linked in my Amazon shop, but uh, there's tons of cloches everywhere. You can get whatever kind of cloche you want. Okay, next up on our list, we have the begonia cracklin rosy Ooh, ah. This plant is on this list because A, begonia in general, in my experience, can be a little bit trickier to take care of. Cane begonia, such as this one, are a bit easier. For me, the biggest challenge I find with begonia during the winter time is keeping humidity high. These plants can definitely be prone to crispy tips if your humidity and moisture levels drop too much too fast. The plant will get some light crisping and probably leaf loss eventually. The way I combat this with the begonia is yet again a cloche. I really love cloches for smaller plants like this. It is a very easy and beautiful solution, but you can also invest in things like a humidifier to provide very consistent and, uh, what's the word I want? reliable humidity. Begonia, it's like not the hardest plant in the world to take care of during the winter, but there are definitely a lot of natural things that will happen, like your heat turning on, making the air drier, that could potentially upset your begonia. We all know begonia can be a little finicky. <laughs> okay, next up on the list, I'm gonna get a little bit general here. So I'm gonna talk about Hoya in general, actually, which might come as a surprise, but for demonstration purposes here, I have my Hoya obovata. Hoya in general, I have come to find are typically pretty simple, easy, and vocal houseplants. I don't find them to be immensely challenging. I am going to kind of umbrella my words today because there are so many varieties of Hoya out there and some are much harder than others. In general, I do typically have good luck and success with Hoya and I feel like a lot of you feel the same way in your homes. However, I am talking about Hoya today in regards to winter because of temperature and Hoya are actually fairly sensitive to big temperature changes and drafts. I do have some Hoya next to windows and I will definitely be keeping an eye out on how they're doing being close to a colder area such as a window. Just keep an eye on them. If they are start having a lot of leaf loss and decline, just make sure you're moving them to a little bit of a warmer environment that isn't too dry. Again, you can add a humidifier or something like that to improve the environment surrounding your Hoya. And lastly today, I wanna talk about the rattlesnake calathea. And this one, I'm gonna add a huge disclaimer to. I am so surprised with the ease I've been having in taking care of this plant. When I hear calathea at this point in my houseplant journey, I don't think I am better than them. I run in the other direction. They have brought me so much stress, so much death, so much worrying that I tend to steer a bit clear from Calathea, even though they are absolutely stunning houseplants. Beautiful, some of the most 
gorgeous leaf textures and patterns and colors within the houseplant community that I've seen, especially affordable and accessible ones. But I do have to give immense credit to the rattlesnake calathea because this plant has been so easy, so adaptive, so flexible to my care and home that I don't wanna paint a bad picture for this, this specific calathea. I really do love her and I've had like no crispy tips during my care with her. So this is a success plant, but I did want to use her to kind of talk about Calathea in general. And this is my first winter with a rattlesnake Calathea specifically. I am just kind of flagging that this could potentially be an issue. Calathea are known to be a uh, drama queens of the houseplant world because they love like filtered distilled water. They love high humidity. They love a perfect amount of dappled light. They are very needy and specific in their care and it can be a tad bit overwhelming to take care of these plants even when it is optimal growing season and it can only get more challenging during the winter times when there is less light, more dry air, and uh, their growth slows down so you might not really know how much water to give them. My suggestion for Calathea kind of similar to how you handle the alocasia is to just let them guide you. And that is a skill that definitely takes time, patience, trial and error. So don't beat yourself up if it's not coming to you super naturally right away. Some tools that might help are again, grow lights where you can have a really consistent and scheduled a program of lighting for your house plants. A moisture meter might help because you can actually measure the moisture level in the soil and be able to tell if your calathea needs some more water. And of course, a humidifier or a cloche or a, uh, what is the word I want? Or like a grow tent or an Ikea cabinet, something that's gonna really maintain the humidity around your calathea is gonna be a huge help. Calathea in the past for me have definitely raised some red flags, raised my blood pressure and got me super nervous. So I just had to include them in this list. And with all that being said, those are the five houseplants I think are worst for winter, at least within my collection. Huge disclaimer there. <laughs> Please let me know down below what houseplants you are not looking forward to caring for this winter. And we can maybe share tips, talk about it, relieve some stress. Again, if you wanna check out Soltec Solutions, they do have their Black Friday sale running until November 27th. I highly recommend them. I highly recommend you check it out and you can use code Black Black Friday for 20% off and again up to 40% off with on-site discounts as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, comment, notification bell, merch, all that good stuff. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!